Um, <sighs> what episode is this? Six? Six. Six or seven? It's in the tail end of the single digits. Mm-hmm. Nasty Work Podcast episode, whatever this is. Uh, we're recording live from my house in Los beautiful, sunny Los Angeles in uh, the Bel Air zip code, but we're not technically in Bel Air, but, you know, good zip code. It is a good zip It's very nice. It's very nice. Very lush, very green. Very verdant, as you as as someone with any sort of vocabulary would say. Verdant? I've never I've never heard that. I know. Never heard. <laughs> Product of the Baltimore City <laughs> Schools. First of all, I went to school in the county. I lived in the city. Yeah, but, but he'd be false claiming that, that he fucking is from the city. I've never false claimed that before in my life. My mom has lives in the city. You, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to start this off by talking about Baltimore. We did that last well, time. Right. Talk right. about we just set, we just bro, talked about up? it for like ad nauseum already. There's nothing to talk about. I'd rather much rather talk about Charlottesville. What about what's, it? It's gorgeous. What's going on there? What's it like? What's the weather like? What are the it's people probably like? Hot right now. People are cool. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it should go crazy. It's kind of got like a uh, like a. I don't know. Like it's like a nice college town in the mountains, you know? It's a fucking it's a good vibe, bro. But those streets couldn't hold me, I'll tell you that much right now. I've only been to that one time and I must say it is it is really, really nice. It is like a Phil, wonderful you... place. <laughs> Phil, what are you doing, dude? Phil. Freak bull. Um Oh, this is actually Phil's actually our first guest on the podcast now that I think about it. Yeah, he's not gonna say shit though. He's a man of few words. He is a man of few words. He's a stoic. Alright, um uh, what are we here to talk about? We well, got to talk about Sex in the City. But let's start with the store opening, honestly. Okay. Let's thank, talk about thank that. Thank you to everyone who came by mm-hmm. for the opening of Luke's NYC LA, Luke's LA, Luke's in LA, mm-hmm. 8012 and a half Melrose, 90046, mm-hmm. Luke's.store, at Luke's NYC, <laughs> <laughs> TikTok, Twitter, Pinterest, you know, Instagram, all that. Um, were you, were you uh, happy with the turnout? With how many yeah, people thanks, pulled up? thanks for everyone who came by. I really do appreciate it. We had a line all day. It was very nice. I appreciate everyone showing up and showing out. For sure. And I will definitely say that people were definitely uh, chomping at the bit to get into the store. The line was so fucking long. It was oh nice. Oh, my God. I, I almost like was – for a little bit, I was considering – I mean, it moved very quickly, but if it were, like, staying or uh, the line was kind of stagnant for a while, I was really going to have to go out. I felt like get, like, people, like, water. I didn't want people to, like, pass out in line or something. If people aren't prepared to wait in a line, that's on them, bro. I'm not here to fucking <laughs> – babysit people in line like you know exactly what you're getting yourself into when you go wait in a fucking line outside which is crazy enough thank you to everyone who did that for me obviously that makes sense but any other application waiting in a line is fucking crazy i mean with that with that place it is kind of like a very finite amount of stuff like there's going to be one or a couple of things in there that are actually your size so if you want something you might actually have to stand in line but standing in line for like something like an iphone where there's just dude mass produce is fucking crazy We were just at the fucking mall, and there were a bunch of fucking nerds lining up at the Swatch store. And I was like, yo, what's up? Like, I went in there, and I was like, what are these fucking nerds lined up for? And he was like, oh, we're dropping a watch at 5. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. At 5 o'clock? Yeah. Well, how long was the line? How long was the line? 15 people. Really? Like, y'all motherfuckers are sitting here to fucking resell a watch and maybe make $200. It's like, what is your time really worth? Oh, uh, we kind of did the math on the kid. Uh, maybe I'll cut in some of the footage. But last year when we opened the store, or the year was it the year before last? Oh, and we got the I sold the frags for like three hundred dollars. I think it was gonna sell them for like eight hundred. Yeah, and we like sat there and we did the math because uh, the young man was in the line for like two days. Yeah, I think it ended up being less than minimum wage. It, it, this is also gonna be the first time that someone has pooped live on the. Phil <laughs> <laughs> poop. Phil poop. Good job, Phil. Big poop. Good boy. Good boy, Phil. Good boy. But yeah, we did like the math on that, and we were kind of just like came to the conclusion that he made like twenty three dollars an hour. Yeah, it's just like not really worth it. Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. That is, I guess, what your time is worth. Damn, yeah. he's going for two. Jeez, dude. Uh, oh, it's time he's upset. I gotta call in the poop police. The poop police. Aurora. Oh no. Aurora. You might want to come inspect this. Oh, man. You might want to come inspect this poop. Is it looking? Yeah, it's real loose. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not looking, it's not looking <laughs> good. Right, we, anyway. got the, we got the poop police on the scene. Um, yeah. I mean, shout out everyone who waits in line. I just, mm-hmm. I, for me personally, I'm not waiting in line for shit. If I pull up to something and there's a line and I know I can't jump it, I'm, I'm leaving. 
what are like some of like the favorite like your favorite pieces that we like had in store and shit that that went i mean a lot of like the really good shit went like in the first like 25 minutes but i don't know everything's so good you know personally me i really like that activist tea that shit was so oh, yeah, activist tea was funny yeah that shit um, was sweet. i've had a few activist things recently i don't really remember i mean like all the erd stuff went which is cool we just dropped everything online it's out there in the middle it's soft yeah i think he did double he, drop he did double drop tread carefully when did he eat the cheesecake i dropped a single molecule <laughs> of fucking cheesecake on the floor that was that was twenty minutes ago. Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah, there were a lot of really good things. I've been saving stuff for a while, but also again, like I think like I said in that complex interview, it's just like, you know, we we filled the store ninety percent with back stock, and it's still the best selection that you're ever gonna find anywhere, which is kind of crazy. Like, shut up, shut up, them. I mean, that is that is true. We do have a lot of really fucking good shit. Luke's not store, if anybody hasn't fucking peeped. <laughs> okay, so let's let's stop plugging the store for a minute and actually talk. I mean, yeah, this is not going to get us motion on Spotify, I'll <laughs> I tell mean, you that. I mean, really what's going to get us motion is the next topic, which is the worst show I've ever fucking oh seen in my, my God, life. Oh, my God, dude. God, dude. The worst show I've ever seen in my life. Fucking sex in the city. Is it in the city or in the city? I think it's in the city. Sex in the city. Well, sex and the city. What does it fucking matter? It's stupid. Yeah, dude. I mean, these... these fu- How do I, like, say how I feel without fucking getting canceled? <laughs> for being a misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> for the two women who listen to this podcast. I mean, in reality, dude, these women are fucking idiots in this show, and they're all so fucking selfish oh. and narcissistic. My, the redhead and the brunette are the cool ones. The two blondes are fucking awful. They're Awful, the red awful cool. people. Horrible The brunette people. sucks, but she's hot, so it's fine. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Uh, but the two blondes are fucking awful. It's just a show about about nothing, it feels like. Nothing ever happens. This is like, it's just like, yeah, an episode of, like, let me be the worst person I possibly well, can be. Well, you know, be. honestly, in that, in that regard, it kind of is the most accurate depiction of New York life. Because, like, mm. every day in New York is about nothing. And it's, like, me interacting generally, like... All, all my all my friends, all my peers, everyone I interact with, and everyone they interact with, and continuing out into that web are just all the most awful people in the world, <laughs> <laughs> myself included, you know? True, however, however, people in New York are just, like, kind of more, like, they're just real as fuck, more so than the show portrays them to be, you know? It's not all, uh, let me go to a dinner party, let me get cocktails, and let me do X, Y, Z, little thing yeah it's, it's more there's more like real life shit happening obviously i mean it's a show but not be, the, none of these women have any real problems is the fucking crazy thing every problem that they have they create themselves every yeah. fucking problem they have they create themselves and they create them in the worst fucking possible ways by being selfish self-centered and generally just you know emotional loose cannons yeah yeah i don't know i I like the br- I like the brunette. She's hot. The brunette is 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 super bad. She is she is definitely a bad. She's got the wagon she for sure. She got the little wagon. She's cute. She is a cutie pie. Mm. Yeah, they like she was like too bad though. They couldn't make her like like normal. They didn't make her like a dumbass. I mean, if they made the show and the women actually I normal. Oh yeah, dude. Like uh, I think like Michael something Park or something. I, no, I feel but, like whoever wrote this is like did not do like the female. Like gender, any fucking favors? Oh, f- absolutely not! Absolutely not! No, no, no. Uh, uh-uh. uh. It's crazy to me that that show was on for so long, and people find it so entertaining because it's really it is not entertaining. Come on, you think that is entertaining? We yeah. watched like six episodes in like <laughs> a night. Yeah. I was I was fading in and out. You know what I mean? I was I mostly mean, on I, my phone. That's what I think a show like that is all about, though, is like you don't really have to pay attention to anything. Like that's what like media. That's what good media is about. Like you know, like I don't, I hate a movie where you have to like really pay attention to what's going on. Like Planet of the Apes, for example. Like there's so much going on, you got to really pay attention. I don't know. You put on fucking House Hunters and I'm locked the fuck in. Well, that's different because that's actually important. <laughs> true true that. There's nothing more important than the musings and bad taste of ugly people from the Midwest. Buying homes, insanely ugly, hideous homes. And I'm always like, I would offer them like 750 for that. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just like, that. being a real estate agent would stress me out. Oh, it would be fucking awful. 
Oh, it would be God, absolutely dude. awful. It seems like one of the worst jobs ever. Yeah, I mean, no wonder they're all like degenerate alcoholics and like cocaine addicts. But they're all degenerate alcoholics because it's fucking easy. All you do is you go to a place and you're like, here it is. You just gotta be good with people. Yeah, is. really. You just gotta be good with people. This is what are you looking for? Okay, there it is. That's all you do. You don't have to build it. You don't have to do anything. You're like a, you're like a fucking a, just a conduit. Yeah, it's like a, being a professional. I get. I mean, I was gonna talk shit about professional middleman, but that's kind of exactly what I am. So it's like that is that is your life. Maybe like maybe you know maybe they are important to the ecosystem of our economy. What do you think? Uh, what are you staring at? I'm trying to think. How? What? What is there to think about? Because your job is more about curating a place with a bunch of shit, where you can like, like you design kind of like uh, an atmosphere and like a yeah, an eclectic I guess, I guess, sense yeah. of the shit that's in there. Whereas like a house is just like someone would could sell this house, and it's just another a, you know on the stack of papers of the other fucking houses that they have to sell what the fuck are you talking about like I, it's in a binder i'm just saying like yeah, it's just like they I just guess, open up flip I through guess. the binder and you they're like find here the it right is. home though you know they're not like oh maybe i mean I'm, I'm sure there are like fucking real estate agents and all they do is this they just sell like mid-century modern homes yeah, and yeah I, like, think, I think finding a niche is probably good you know like if you're a real estate agent in, like columbus ohio yeah i'm sure like you know, like, there's there's only so many fucking houses, so it doesn't really even matter what the fuck you sell, because it's, like, who the fuck wants to live there anyway, but, like, you know, like, in a place like this that, like, the life actually, that your life actually matters, like, you know, you want to find a house that matches your lifestyle. We should just, uh, we should just start, like, a freak bull, uh, <laughs> damn it, bro. real estate firm. I would I would do real estate. A freak bull real estate firm, and then like you, we just have freaky shit up in the crib. Like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, how many swings you want in the crib, bro? Uh, like a, uh, what about like a like a house flipper thing? But you, you like every house you flip, you know how like every house flipper kind of like has a thing. You know, you're, uh-huh. like, you're like, yo, I really like this house, but but the way it's laid out right now, there's nowhere to put the sex dungeon. <laughs> like, like yeah, like the house is great. You know, the price is right, but, like, to, to reconfigure the rooms to put the sex dungeon in, it's going to take us over budget. I'm sorry. <laughs> Way over budget. I think HGTV would need I think there should be, like, a freaky, like, a BET uncut for HGTV. Oh, that's such fucking nasty work. Holy HGTV shit. HGTV uncut. Oh, God. It would be so insane. It would be ungodly. I'm trying to watch Tark and, and Christina fucking bang. Who the fuck are those? Who are they? They're the fucking, uh, and jo- Chip and Joanna Gaines. They're like these like attractive couples who fucking uh, who be flipping houses and they're rich as fuck and they're hot and they and they have bad taste. <laughs> HGTV has also slipped into like the farmhouse like shit and it's like honestly gotten like so bad. It's always been bad, but like what is bad? The taste of the, oh, the, the yeah. des- of the designs, because you know, growing up, I would my mom would always watch it and always would be like, "This is horrible," and it's like never, it hasn't gotten better. I, I mean, I don't expect it to be fucking Architectural Digest or something, but like, you know, I would expect some people to just be like, "Hmm, maybe lay off the live, laugh, love accoutrement." I think people know what pushes the needle forward and what makes money, and I think you know. Like, your niche tastes are not pushing the deal forward for an HGTV, an A&E group uh, uh, franchise. I mean, are we just in a, is this like, just, we live in a live, laugh, love society? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing is, I really think that, like, us, people like us, our peer, like, if you live in, like, New York or L.A. or even, like, Chicago, my, like, like, it is hard to quantify what, like, the taste of, like, most of America is, and it's bad. Like, there's a reason that Home Goods is a fucking billion dollar company and they're selling fucking driftwood with shit called, like, you know, like cauterized on it, like fucking soldered on it. Like, that, that is most of people's taste. You know, like, like black and white p- pictures of the Eiffel Tower aren't just for Airbnbs, they're for fucking people's houses. And the reason that they're in Airbnbs is because they match people's, most people's taste. I mean, unfortunately, very true. Yeah, like, you really have to, like, take a step back and, like, yeah, obviously, like, I have you know amazing taste like the best taste of probably anyone alive you know you're chilling which is cool 
Um, Are you talking about me? <laughs> and, you know, like, you have to realize that, like, I mean, I saw the satisfaction thing in your apartment. Oh, uh, let's not fucking go back to that, all right? Jesus Christ. No, but, like, you know, I'm not, like, honestly, I don't even think I have that great of taste. Uh-huh. Like, I know people who have much better taste than me. Um, I, I really fucking feel like the taste thing, a large portion of that is just having money. <laughs> you have to have a lot of money to have a good cap, taste. Bro. That's you think, cap. you don't think that's, no. ca- you think that's, no, cap. I think there are people who have amazing taste to thrift every single thing that they have and find a way to make it work. It's even, it even like that. It's like, okay, first of all, shopping around Yeah, like, yes, if lot. you, if you live in a fucking Motel 8 because you get paid every day at the construction site and you fucking can barely live, yes, of course your taste is going to be hampered by that. But I think, you know, when you get to a normal, like, 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 you know, like, a, like you, you have a, a house, a roof over your head. Like, you're able to fucking have good taste if you have good taste. I mean, also, yeah, there's lo- there are levels to that shit. Like, I don't I think mean, anyone living in the Bowery Mission is worried about their fucking taste level. Of course not, dude. Of course not. But if you do live in Ohio and you have a stable job, I'm just saying. What? Well, how likely is it that you're going to blow $1,000 on a mid-century modern sofa? It's no, but it's happen. low, but you might be able to find one on Facebook Marketplace if you really care that much about it for like 75 bucks because some old lady who bought it, you know, like because her husband was Dutch, like, and like no one in, in your town knows what it is. Like, there are people who, with good taste. Money doesn't necessarily like, and also like, there are plenty of people who like, have good taste but can't afford this shit, but it doesn't mean that they have worse taste. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, like there are people who know way more about cool shit than either of us and just can't afford cool shit. And there's also cool shit that me and you know about that we fucking can't afford, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like, it's not like Jeff Bezos has, like, the world's best taste because he's got the most money. Like, he still dresses like fucking, you know, like a cartel member. Maybe it's just more like being able to exercise the taste that you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you, but I really think that's like also kind of like I think you're giving rich people too much credit, and I you won't hear me say that very often. I mean, all right, fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just be thinking like, oh man, it would be nice to have like a Vladimir Kagan couch or something. Well, get your fucking bands up, bro. I really need to fucking get them up because really, really, like, the sign of, like, really having bread is when you walk into someone's crib and you're like, what the fuck kind of couch is this? This is, like, an insane couch. And then you realize that, like, couches are, like, typically, like, the most expensive thing that you have in your home. You think so? I mean, compared to, like, you know, taking out, like, your cars and, like, maybe, like, very expensive pieces of art. Yeah, typically. Um, couches are really expensive. Like night, especially really nice couches. Like fifty that fifty, you can definitely easily spend fifty thousand dollars on like an insane couch. I think the most expensive thing in my home is my indomitable spirit. <sighs> fucking That's priceless though. I knew you can't gonna, put a price I, on that. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say some fucking bullshit. Like that. <laughs> what do you mean? I knew you were gonna say some bullshit like that. Sorry, bro. Sorry <laughs> that you know I don't I don't care that much about. Um, Material possessions. I'm I'm more here for the spiritual. <laughs> is that so? Yeah. Is that so? Yeah. Have you really been focused? See, and we were talking about this in the last podcast. We knew that your spiritual arc was coming, and I'm happy that you're finally coming back around to it. Me and your mother were correct. What's going on with that? How? Where are you spiritually these days? Who are you praying to? How often are you praying? <laughs> praying all, all day, every day, baby. What are you praying for? I want everyone to do well. Wow. That's that indomitable I'm, I'm thinking spirit. About, and maybe I'm giving up too much free game, but I really think – I was talking to you about this. I also think that there's room – There's this is something that kind of really hasn't been explored, like a two-man preacher situation, black and white, you know, like covering all bases. Think about it. I did think about it when you said it. And you got any thoughts? Nah, you need to tap somebody else. We, I think we have a, a word. Lot. I think we have another, a lot of other friends that would be much better at it than me, honestly. Like who? Um, I don't want to say any names because I don't want to have to fucking bleep it out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think you'd be good at it, man. I think I think once I think once you find the Lord, you'll you'll be able to do it. You're just living a very sinful lifestyle right now. Am I? Yeah. Really. Huh. Do you do you want me to? I could I could go down a series of questions that if you answered correctly would prove that you're living a sinful lifestyle. Shoot. All right. Um. So it's August 
of 2024. Yes. How many different women have you had sex with in 2024? Old All body, right, we're, new ca- body. We're, we're cutting. This is this is <laughs> this is, un- this is, this is unfair. This is fucking unfair. How many nights? How many? How many times have you? How many? In, how many 24 hour periods in the 175 days of 2024 have you had more than nine drinks? Very few. I really haven't been getting that drunk this year, honestly. I think that's also because I stopped drinking so much. Yeah, you stopped drinking so much, and then, like, I'm just, like, I'm too busy to get, like, I really haven't been, like, blackout drunk like that in kind of, like, a while. I know. I haven't seen you posting about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. (laughs) You got me (laughs) fucked up, dude. You got me fucked up. (laughs) <sighs> Holy shit! That's fucking. Cr- that's that's crazy. Yeah, no, that's gonna be on me, big dog. Yeah, that's that's. I'm just so, sorry. I'm getting. I'm getting. <laughs> so, I'm getting titulating for the for the podcast. You're fucking over here, going full send, throwing me <laughs> under the bus, dude. You threw me under the bus, vertical, right underneath. So my dick, balls, head, spine, all got crushed. <laughs> uh, well, sorry, that's on me. Eh, the, that's Lord, all good. the Lord told me to do it. I mean, you know, I think I think it's known that I'm kind of slutty, so yeah, Are I know. You? I, mean, I mean, it's fine. I'm I don't slut? care. Okay. Um, if you were to be a preacher, what, um, what's the word like? What what type of Christian would you be? What is it? Uh, what what sect? I mean, I probably if there's a word for it. What is I, it? I probably would uh, follow the same. Uh, Your mom's a preacher, claw. right? Yes. Yeah, my grandparents, my both both my grandparents are preachers too. Holy um, shit. probably Methodist. Methodist. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm not like I don't feel like I'm a Baptist guy really. That's not really my bag. What about Catholic? Definitely not my bag. There are black Catholics in Louisiana. Yeah, but like, you're a pastor and you can't like have a wife. Like, oh really? That's like still not on my that thing. Shit? Yes, dude. That's like their whole thing. Nah, I think they switched it up. No, they or is that not. why they were fucking kids? Yeah, that's probably as why. Mm, yeah, well. I don't think that's the reason why. But, <laughs> but you I mean, can, it, you can, you it, can take a guess. It probably didn't contribute <laughs> to a lack of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Can't get married all of a sudden. Fucking little little Billy starts looking like a hot piece of ass. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it is. It's pretty bad. I mean, dude. Per, to me personally, I obviously that is something that I had considered when I was very young. Because you know, you look at your parents, you're like, what do they do? What do you think? And you know, you kind of like. Think about what that would be like, and I thought about what that was, would be like, and it just seems like it would not be for to, me. I wanted to be a marine biologist. Really? Yeah. Damn you, out on the boat. Yeah, I just it seemed like I, once I kind of like, like you know, I became like more of an adult and realized how depressing of a job that was because every animal is going to die out in our lifetime. I was like, this is not for me. I don't think I've ever even seen you fucking swim before, bro. <laughs> I'm a strong swimmer. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, I've never seen you swim before. What's in the swim team? Really? Mm-hmm. My first job was a lifeguard. Really same, actually. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. That was my second I job. I was a strong swimmer. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a seal, bro. <laughs> I'm comfortable in the water. <laughs> I can hold my breath for long periods of time. Being a lifeguard, I've got to ask, mm-hmm. did you ever fucking save anybody? You know, like my second day there, dude, it was like, <laughs> no, let me tell this story. This was bullshit. I did not like this. Okay. So it was like one of them pools that had like like a mini water park, you know, like the slides and shit. And it was, it was like April. Like I started mad early and I was like, yo, it's too cold for these kids to be swimming. It's cold as shit. I'm not getting in this water. And uh, this kid comes out of the... Uh, the slide and he kind of gets caught in like the water that's churning at the bottom of the slide and i I was observing he was gonna be fine (laughs) you know like he was like he was he would have made his way out of it but my supervisor forced me to go in and get this little motherfucker um and he looked at me like i was fucking crazy and i felt crazy too because i knew that he would have been fine i was watching him if he had gotten churned a few more times i probably would have intervened but he he i also probably was a strong a good learning experience for him to get kind of like sucked into that a few times just so like know that like you can't fuck around (laughs) i think lifeguards are making people soft huh is that so drowning would suck though have you you've never almost drowned before 
Knock on wood, no. Hell no, that shit sucks. Uh, one time when I was a kid, I was actually in a pool uh, that was really, really deep. Like an Olympic swimming pool in like Annapolis. Foot deep, yeah. Something like that. And I remember I was like with my cousin and my brother or something. We were like trying to see if we could swim to the bottom. And I was like the oldest, biggest, most, most athletic, most handsome, obviously. Um, and I swam <laughs> very, very, like really, really deep. And I remember there was like a moment where I was like looking up and I was like, Oh shit! I went too deep. I don't know if I can make it back. You're fucking weak ass lungs, bro. I, dude, stupid. I was I was like seven. <laughs> I was you're seven a, years you're old, a and I was like, and I was like, it, it was like a it was a deeper pool. They used to like train divers and shit. And there was like fourteen feet deep. Wow. So like, I swam really, really close to the bottom. I didn't even reach the bottom, but I remember I was like trying to swim to the top, and I was like, oh shit, like. I'm gonna die in the pool. That was like one of like the first moments of my life where like I was like, I've made a really big mistake. I'm a fucking idiot. Holy shit, I'm gonna drown here. And I just like kind of like, <gasps> like I actually swallowed some water. Finally made it like to the top and it's like, <clears throat> like fucking like coughed it out and like went over to the side and was like I. Uh, that was like the, I remember that so distinctly. It's like the first moment where like you know, you have little moments where like your cognition kind of like kicks on. You're like wait. That was almost like really bad. I uh, I almost got hit by a car when I was a kid. Oh my god, it's scary. Yeah, so like when we would go to the beach. Um, there was like a big two lane road, like you know, like one lane each way. That was like kind of the main thoroughfare for like the little beach town we went to. Uh huh. And um, I th- I think I was like four. I just ran out in front of a car, and like I'm pretty sure like it missed me by like like legit like a couple inches. Whoa. That shit would have turned me into like, red mist. What did What did you think like afterwards? Uh, I just remember I was like, why are they yelling at me? I made it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I remember thinking, y'all pussy. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Is it, like, normal for children to experience, have near-death experiences? Yeah, like I mean, that? dude, think about it. Like, that's why people used to have, like, 15 kids, because they would just, like, die. I thought that was more because of, you, you know, cholera. Or yeah, well, yeah, you got, like, like, two would get cholera. Three would get tuberculosis. That's one, five. One gets one drowns in a pool. Yeah, one of them falls into a well. Away. You know, like, one of them, <laughs> gets, one of them breaks a leg and it gets gangrene. You know, like, Ugh. you're lucky if one of them makes it to adulthood. It's like fucking seahorses or some shit, like baby turtles. It's probably why the society's all fucked up. We weren't meant to live this No, long. dude, we were not. Fuck no. And no, everyone's supposed to be hot and sinewy. I, the fact that I'm, like, still alive, like, if, <laughs> if I was in a royal, I wouldn't be alive right now. Now everybody's just addicted to Grubhub and porn. Exactly. But and, and all wicked the back shots. <laughs> wicked, wicked back shots is what all people are obsessed with Yeah, now. dude. So, um, no, nah, I mean, knock on wood, I don't think I've almost ever drowned. That shit would suck. That'd be such a like a bullshit way to die. I'm telling you, it was a horrible experience. It was a horrible, horrible experience. I got. A, I'm I be, surprised that you could swim. I mean, I my my grandparents after that. I mean, like they didn't. I never told my family about that. You guys are probably. This is probably like the first time I've ever actually talked about it. Really? Yeah. Well, you don't want to. You know, it's like embarrassing to tell your family that you're a dumbass. Well, I mean, I was like eight or seven or something. My grandparents got us swimming lessons like. Shortly yeah, after I, I started pool. swimming when I was like fucking, you know, like two years old. Like I, I was like swimming in the ocean and in a pool from like a very, very, very young age. I'm like very comfortable in water. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we're getting up on time. I think Matan's about to be here. That's that, probably him. That yeah. probably is him. So we should probably wrap it up. All right, Nasty Work Podcast at OG Luke Mook. Um, that's it. Uh, at Tokyo <laughs> Drift 420 at NASA Square Pocket at Luke's NYC. You all know the deal. You know, go fucking see the new store of uh, 8012 uh, and a half Melrose half. Yeah, that one. Yeah, thanks for watching. We yeah. love you guys. All right, bye.